Hi everyone, this is Zach Keeson with Keeson Films. Today I'm joined by IMC Productions, the director and producer of a Frontline, an arm and stop motion series on YouTube. Thank you for joining me today, sir. Thanks for inviting me, Zach. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me. No problem. Thank you for joining me. So let's get right into it. What's it been like to produce your own stop motion series on YouTube? It's, it's pretty hard, for being honest. Uh, it's been a really hard path, you know. It's been almost a year since I decided to start uh, to make something really this big. Uh, because, yeah, uh, producing and doing all this by your own, well, almost by your own, you know, uh, it's pretty damn hard. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. when everybody starts, you know, doing... Uh, stop motion film especially with plastic soldiers you think ah, it's gonna be pretty easy i'm gonna uh end up you know uh filming this episode or this idea or whatever the hell it is in less than two or three weeks or and then i'm gonna just edit it in one day and damn no no it took me more than a month to film from an episode one for example as the second one took me two months um and yeah it just gets pretty hard but i think at the end uh it's pretty cool and really awesome to create these type of projects, you know, as a hobby. For me, it's just amazing, and I feel really proud for all the Armament community, especially inside of the people that they are on the Jeromo Discord server. I think a lot of people inside there, they're amazing. Uh, if, it, if it wasn't because of them, Frontline will have never existed, for real. Well, that's so, yeah. very excellent. So what has been some of the challenges, unique challenges for your production by itself? like? production challenge what's been going on with that of course uh okay so of course uh as you know um not uh another guy that lives in the usa another guy that lives in australia another guy that lives uh, in the uk uh as you know i'm from latin america and one of the problems is that uh you know with my writing skills mm -hmm. of course english it's not my mother language uh of, but i've been practicing since i was in kindergarten you know it's like my second language for me um but again, called uh, like a small cultural barrier has been a small challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, another challenge uh, has been, you know, uh, getting uh, some props for some films. Uh, you know, I wish I could have more trucks and that type of stuff. But here in Mexico, <laughs> it's not that easy to get that, uh, a lot of the stuff uh, you guys in the USA or the guys in Australia and the UK have. I mean, for example, I wish I, I could have more official stuff. I wish I could have, you know, more Matchbox clones, more Airfix stuff, more clones or original stuff or whatever. I wish I could get more, but just uh, Mexican manufacturers don't produce them, you know. Mm -hmm. They like more to produce, like, Mark's stuff. Uh, they like to produce more, like, really vintage stuff, you know, molds from the 60s. We we even have those and a half that cost a dollar. So I'm surprised that for you guys it costs, like, Last time I checked, it cost 13 bucks each, right? Or something yes, like that. It costs around $14 to buy two of them if you if you get lucky and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so, interesting. You know, it's interesting that you, on the one hand, you guys down there have a lot more, you know, you have a lot more options in certain areas, but other options you don't. And it's cool that you see in your production that you've made a lot of your props in your film. You've made a lot of your own props to fulfill that gap. And that's really cool. Yeah, it is. It is really, you know, it's been challenging, but it... it it's cool, you know. Um, you know, for example, getting shake shake hedgehogs, you know, those tank obstacles. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen, you know, on the um, like the general has some. Uh, I've seen other dudes uh, using them. I just got uh, two of them a couple of days ago, and it was just a hit of luck, you know. I found it on a garage sale, and the lady which was selling them told me, "Hey, you can get one for a peso, pretty much less than a cent of a dollar." So I said, "Okay." I got a pair of those and I don't know, I mean, you know, collecting is sometimes an issue, but again, the cultural barrier, I think it's a, a more big big deal. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I, I like the general mode Discord server, you know, a lot because people there say, you know what, this guy has a great idea, but doesn't know a lot how to portray it because, uh, you know, I, I don't know some of the military terms that you guys use in the USA or in the UK or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they said, you know what? Why don't you just handle your your script? We check it out and we can give you some feedback and we can make some corrections. So that's that's why I want to thank, you know, 
uh, especially some some of my dudes, you know, like this guy called uh, the Orange Veteran. Uh, I want to thank some dude, uh, the General Mo. Uh, who is this guy called? So, uh, VVEG Productions. You know him as Drew. Mm-hmm. It was Drew is a, Drew Overhold is a pretty good friend of mine. Lucidic Films has also helped me. Uh, another dude called Leland Productions, Armies of Plastic Studios. So yeah, all these guys just uh, gather around and say, you know what? Uh, we love your idea. Well, how about we make it better? And I, and I say, hell yeah. And it's been, it's been a you know a project from all the community, and that's something that I love. Yeah, that's really cool that you, the whole community could come together, help you, and help and help you by helping by helping yourself by making a better project, making the film better. And you know, as the series has gone on, you've made a major improvements from the very first episode to last last and stuff so it's been very excellent and very rewarding to watch this series grow and i want to actually leads to my next question how long do you plan on writing this series and producing it all right so the creative process is pretty much like a week or two mm-hmm. it's uh writing down um you know writing down the script uh then it's a month and a half or two months of filming because yeah, I mean, of course, I have college and stuff to do, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. So of course, it's you know priorities, right? Um, then of course, it's a week or two of editing, visual, and audio effects, which I really hate audio. And yeah, then a week later, you there you go, there you can upload a new front end episode. So that's how it works, the creative process, you know. Very nice. Uh, so how long do you plan on running this series? Do you have a, do you have a long-term goal for it, or are you not sure yet, or what's going on what's with that? So I've been thinking, you know, uh, of making it eight episodes long. So yeah, it's on, it's already hit, you know, the half, I'm already halfway there, you know, mm-hmm. to finish the series. But although I've been, you know, thinking on making some spin-offs later, or probably, you know, increasing the amount of episodes but again it depends you know because i i have my also you know my personal life you know like yes you know you see here i am and you see the, the guy behind the mask or in the comet and whatever it has another you know life so of course no no it's a now college it's a, an important thing you know uh, yes. of course now we call this you know, I, I haven't returned to school. It's been always like online online uh, stuff, you know? Yes. So it's been like an advantage, but also disadvantage, you know, because it, it's an advantage because I've been, you know, focusing on frontline, yes, but I think I have, you know, uh, how can I say this in English? Like lose attention to classes and stuff, you know? I mean, I'm not a bad student, but the thing is that, you know, you need to also socialize, you know, with people outside the screen. Yes. So I need to, you know, probably I'll be heading back to school um, on the 20th of January. And now that I have some extra time, uh, I'm going to keep uh, right now filming from an episode five because I already finished the script. And again, it was hell. It was all this was possible, especially because of Drew and all those 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 dudes that gather around and decided to uh, change my script and everything. Uh, yeah, uh, it's been, but yeah, it's been really, really hard on that, on that part. Well, as I can say, you know, from socialization, it's hard, it's hard when you, especially the last two years now, we've been going through the pandemic and all that stuff. So it's very important that you find time to socialize and also to get that interaction you need. Because yeah, I can attest to it too, you know, when you're filmmaking, you get so invested in your work, but you need to take a break from what you're doing and make sure you still live your life. And that's cool that you're actually focusing exactly. on it. Um, yeah, exactly. So for voice acting, how has that been working with different voice actors, having them come in and on the project, like in comparison where you first started, where it was just you working on stuff? All right. So I I can still remember. I think I uploaded a, a green propaganda film on my channel. Mm-hmm. And I... Uh, I, I, no, I start. No, sorry. I started, you know, the frontline stuff and the voice acting. Uh, when I uploaded the gray, uh, the gray propaganda film, and then Armies of Plastic Studios. I think you know that guy, right? Yes, I'm aware of him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That guy said, you know what? I like the I love. I love your idea. Uh, how about if we, if I mean, like, 
you, he said to me, hey, can I voice act on the next uh, film that you're doing? And I said, hell yeah, you can. I need help. Because, of course, it's it sounds so flat and boring, you know, with only a single voice. Yes. Uh, but I never expected, you know, to make something like that. But I, as I heard his voice, you know, I said, you know what? Probably would be better if he could uh, be on the green one. Mm-hmm. And then I uploaded the t- so, yeah because I remember no it was first the gray tan green and blue now yeah now that I'm watching it again sorry <laughs> so then this guy called the orange better and approached to me and said hey man uh I I know that you're making now your propaganda films you know for your series hey can, can I participate and I said yeah and I heard his voice and I said, no, you know what? I think this one is perfect for the tan one, which I'm making right now, you know, at that time. Yes. And I placed his voice and he's the narrator. And then he turned to be uh, General Anderson. Uh, then I used Armies of Plastic Studios uh, voice for the green one. And then I used some dudes uh, for the blue one, which was the last one that I uploaded. And like two months later, I uploaded Frontline Episode 1 with their voices. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, oh sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, so it's great that you got, you had your community, you formed this community around you of people who are willing to help you and you know again develop your series. And I know for one, I'm looking forward to see where you take the series and see your future projects uh, in the story. So finally, my last question I have for you: What are your plans for the future? Do you plan on just only doing stop motions? Do you plan on like, spreading out to other media?s Or you know, what are some of your plans for the future? My plans for the future right now are. Uh, you know, I've been thinking on probably once Frontline it's over, I'm probably going to start making more, uh, World War II stop motion stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I have, I have also, you know, I have also a, uh, a collection of, uh, Call of Duty figures. I love Mega Constructs mm-hmm. too. And, uh, well, I have also seen your videos right away. You have also some Mega Constructs. Content. Yes. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> No, that, that that's dope. Not gonna lie. But, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they're, they're cool. I prefer the Legos. Uh, I genuinely hate Legos. Uh, it, well, when it comes, you know, when they over explode like Legos and World War Two, and I say, dude, uh, you know what? Mega Constructs does a better, better figures for me. So I'm planning to make World War Two stuff with them, probably. Uh, probably painting and making dioramas once you know I'm done with uh, plastic armament films and and then probably making blocks and I don't know whatever it comes next well awesome you know that's really cool you know I can say hey whatever you do I'm pretty sure you'll do great at it that you know you have a lot of talent for what you, for your work and you know you got really great you also really good at allocating and using your resources that are available to you you know you are limited on some fronts you don't let that stop you and that's admirable oh and so it's great to see that you're actually able to do those things and you know not give up and that's always important and, and you know I can say again from my perspective that I've you know I remember when you first started your channel a couple years ago, just seeing it grow and stuff. It's been really cool. And, you know, I look forward to seeing your future productions, and I wish you the best of luck on everything. Thank you so much, uh, Zach. I really appreciate that. And, well, I hope to see more content of you. Well, thank you. Um, Real quick to everybody here, I want to give thanks to IMC Productions for joining me for this interview today. Hey, I'll be putting links to his YouTube channel, all his production stuff, down in the description below. Please go subscribe to him, support his projects. He's a hard work and YouTuber. Please support him. Again, thank you for being here. I appreciate you being with me today. Thank you so much, Zach, for reminding me, man. It, it, it means a lot, for real. No problem. Look forward to doing more work with you in the future.